It is time for our KSAT Q&A, where we try to separate the fact from the fiction that's out there in so many different things. And we are joined tonight by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg, uh, live from his office at City Hall. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Uh, off the top, we're seeing a slow rise before the holidays. How concerned are you about COVID cases post Thanksgiving? And are there any plans being made by Metro Health or the city to deal with what could be a slow rise in numbers? Well, we, we are watching it carefully and the rise uh, has uh, been uh, not insignificant. So we're monitoring that. Obviously we wanna keep things low. The positivity rate is still below 2%, which is good. Uh, we know that there's going to be more interaction among folks uh, during the holiday season. We're, so we're being cautious and we're, we're continuing to monitor that and confer with the health professionals. The biggest effort that's underway, though, with regard to putting an end to this pandemic is getting folks vaccinated. People five uh, and up now are, are eligible. We now have booster shots that are eligible to all adults. The FDA was going through that process this week. So we need to continue to get the message out. If we want to put the, uh, the put an end to this pandemic, we need to get folks vaccinated. I'm I'm excited. I'm going to be getting my booster shot very soon. So uh, we're we're moving in the right direction. Earlier in the show, we talked about a new report that's out that's pretty alarming. It talks about how parts of San Antonio's south side, uh, this report says, are, is a cancer-causing hotspot due to some emissions that are in that area, neighbors living in and breathing in every single day. I want to see what your reaction to that is, um, your, your takeaway from that, and if there's anything that can be done by the city there. Well, so number one, anytime you see a report like that, of course it's alarming. We, uh, the, the health and safety of our residents, regardless of its federal, state, or local jurisdiction is the most important thing. And so while the threshold is still below the EPA uh, cancer-causing threshold, it's, it's below that, uh, as your report indicated, it's still concerning. And so we wanna make sure that they are following the rules, that they're following their permits by the book. That jurisdiction lies with the state of Texas, the Texas Center for Environmental Quality, our Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. And so they have jurisdiction to make sure that they're following the rules, but we need to hold everybody accountable to make sure that that is true. When we're talking about the state of Texas. I happen to notice uh, when Beto O'Rourke was in town after he announced you were on stage with him, you introduced him. You don't seem to do that very often where I see you on stage with a political candidate. Uh, talk about, I mean, am I reading too much into this? Is there a significance to you being on stage with Beto O'Rourke? Well, I've known Beto for some time uh, and he is a quality public servant. And, um, you know, I know he is uh, taking this race very seriously as everyone in the state of Texas should. Uh, and I don't get involved in many endorsements, uh, particularly in partisan races. I've rarely done that. Uh, so, uh, but this one is too important, Steve. Um, we have been through just hell over the last two years with this pandemic, every single person in this country, and we need to work together to get through it. Uh, whether you're a healthcare professional, uh, an elected official, a grocery store clerk, a teacher, or anyone else, we need to work together to get this country back on its feet. And I look forward to supporting someone who's gonna be part of that effort working with us instead of against us, which we've seen so often uh, with Governor Abbott. So um, that's why I was there is to support the community uh, who was out there yesterday. And I'll, I'll continue to be uh, working to make sure that our city, San Antonio can get back on its feet. And I think we'll have a good partner if, that, um, if he does win that election. I want to change gears yet again here. We got a lot to talk to you about today. Hopscot and all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we, we have been covering some some really interesting arbitration hearings where San Antonio police officers who have been fired, they are trying to get their jobs back. These officers are facing really intense allegations, making sexist, racist comments, making threats to people in their lives. They're trying to prove their cases that that didn't happen, but the city is now in negotiations with the police union, trying to come up with a new contract. And I know the city has really taken a stand on making a bigger push for officer accountability. Talk about where we are in those negotiations and if we're any closer to a deal and making progress on that accountability factor. Well, you know, again, this is one of the most important things we will do uh, in the 
collective bargaining negotiation processes to clean up the disciplinary process to ensure that there's full accountability and transparency in that process. And I do think we're making progress based on the reports I'm seeing from the collective bargaining teams. Objectively, we're making good progress in, in, in coming to a resolution, which uh, for the, the life of this negotiation, I've said, is to ensure that bad officers aren't able to get their jobs back on the force if they were terminated by the chief for good reason. Um, and that is, that is what is currently underway. I think we are making good progress on that. Uh, the deal is not done yet, so there's still work to be done. Uh, but I would say that, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm pleased with the progress, uh, but we are also not moving the goal line. Everyone knows what we've been trying to accomplish. I do believe that the right parties are at the table to get the job done. And finally, before we let you go, I want to, want to let you, you know, once again, give some love out to the UTSA Roadrunners. But what I really want to know is this magical season, undefeated. I mean, we're seeing, what, 35,000 people in the Dome last Saturday. Yeah. What does this mean for San Antonio? Oh, it's huge. Um, it's so important for the city to have something to cheer on after all these uh, difficult months. And, of course, seeing our winning teams come back and, and, you know, the, the Spurs record is not that great, but they're rebuilding. People are getting excited about the Spurs and, and, the, and the team that they're putting together. So we've got some great sports going on. Of course, topping the list right now is UTSA. They're ranked in the college football playoff poll. They're playing for the, the conference championship on their home turf at the Alamo Dome this weekend. I hope to see people there. It's going to be a great game. And we're, you got, as the coach said, if you want to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. And that's what they're doing this weekend. They have the opportunity to do. Let's not forget, though, the Trinity Tigers are now in the in the college football playoffs in Division Three. They're taking on the Mary Harden Baylor uh, team, that is a quality team. But they're un but uh, Trinity's undefeated. We also have the San Antonio Football Club uh, soccer going to the next round of the playoffs. So lots of sports uh, that uh, are are bringing our our city back to life and and lots to cheer on. So look forward to seeing all the fans this weekend. Nice to have something to put that cheer into it. And, and seriously, we got to get you the big foam finger. I mean, I know. this is how we're going to round <laughs> these out. Happen. And let, let's make it happen. We'll we it, I'll wear it. We're going to have to get you several. A UTSA, a Trinity, a San Antonio football club. We'll see how many we can find. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Great. All right, we'll see you next week. week. We'll be right back.